Here I'll show you how to use the sampling distribution simulation from Experience 8. Click on the link to open up StatKey. Here, select sampling distributions for the mean. You can choose your data set from the top. Suppose we want to look at the budget for Hollywood movies. You can actually see the entire data table if you like. Then, set your sample size. Notice the data for the population is shown in a dot plot on the right, and this data is skewed right. If our sample size is too small, say 5, then we may not get the results we like. So we will need the sample size to be 30 or larger. I'm going to use 36. Now, when I hit generate one sample, it takes a random sample of size 36 from this population and shows the dot plot of that sample in the graph below. It also takes the mean of that sample and plots it in the big picture here. Because what the sampling distribution is, is it's the means from each of the samples from the population. Now we've done one of those individuals. One sample, one individual. And in practice, this is what you do. You take one sample from a population and that's your number. And the question is, how does that number fit in with the bigger picture of all possible random samples I could have taken? So, we can do another one. Again, each of these points came from the population above, but it notices it's a different sample, because it's random each time, and I wrote so it's in a different sample mean. Now, doing this by hand would take forever, but we're able to instantly get 10 samples, or 100 samples, or 1,000 samples, and doing a thousand several times, you'll see that we get a normal distributed population. And the mean of this population, the sampling distribution, is 53.39, which is very close to the mean of the original population, 53.481. And you can get it closer the more you hit. So now we have 53.447. So as the sampling distribution gets larger and larger, we get the mean of the sampling distribution is the mean of the population, something that we used, and notice the standard deviations. The standard deviation of this population is 49, and the standard deviation of the distribution is 7. Now, to adjust standard deviations, what we don't normally do is take the standard deviation of the population, 49, and divide by the square root of the sample size. I chose 36 because we can take a square root of that easily. The square root of 36 is 6. So, taking 49 and dividing by 6, you will get something close to 7. 49 divided by 6 is 8. Um, and as we generate more samples, we may see that number get closer and closer to agreement with the formula. Now, if we were to, say, do very small sample sizes, like 3, then we may not get the same results. Notice in this case, when I do a sampling distribution, the sampling distribution is skewed right, just like the population. So with the small sample sizes, I don't get this effect of the central limit theorem. And that's why it's imperative that the sample size be large. Now, if the population is already normal, let's see if we have any normal populations. I guess that's just about normal. We should be able to get by with a smaller sample size now. So since my population was roughly normal already, I'm able to use a smaller sample size and still get a normal distribution. So you can see that there is an exception to the sample size rule if your original population is approximately normal. But for those skewed distributions or anything not normal, we need that sample size to be 30 or more. All right, try this out yourself and uh, let me know what you think.